But then we get this news a couple days ago that the head of UK Athletics wants to shrink the amount of participants at global championships coming from Team GB. I have a lot of thoughts on this, Gordon. Some of these thoughts I've said in prior years because other countries have had policies like this. Other countries have famously left off qualified athletes for world championships or Olympics. But I'll let you go first. Well, no, you're going to let me go first. We're going to let the head of UK Athletics go first. What was the reason why the UK Athletics, <laughs> head of athletics, said we are going to limit he, the team to people who are more likely to medal than what, less likely to medal? He said he wants to be more ruthless. He said that in recent championships, the performance hasn't been good, and he thinks they've been getting, quote, too soft. So in his mind, he thinks if you make it harder to qualify, yeah, that means you're going to run hard. He's basically, basically, he's basically saying he wants to increase the standard, so then you run faster, so then everyone, so then people aren't chasing to be the thirtieth best in the in the world; they're chasing to be the tenth best in the world. He wants to also just pool the resources, right? Consolidate the resources on the top candidates for for medals he used to head up swimming there and here's the quote we put it up on the screen there in swimming we are a little bit more ruthless about who is going to deliver for you he told the daily mail uh uk athletics needs to be a bit tougher around that would you like to weigh in first no i kind of want to weigh in second okay i'll let you weigh in so but he didn't really mention much of it being a budget reason like how much it costs to send an athlete he didn't delve into the because that's like a numbers. reason why a lot of smaller countries don't send everyone because in their mind it's too expensive to f send every single athlete yeah and, and i can touch on money. that yeah in a second too. but i think uk athletics has money all maybe right they don't i don't know his, his job is to do what here uh who's he representing the athletes of united kingdom right so that's your job you aren't the head of war athletics. No. You aren't the head of the Olympics. No. You're not the person booking the hotels. No. Nope. Your job is the head of British athletics. Your job should be to send as many athletes as you can. If they say you get three per event, if you hit the qualifying standards, you send three. You do your best to send three. If they say you get 17, you should send 17 because your job is to get as many of those vests on TV competing for medals. That should be... Wait, wait, your is, job. Is, is his job to get as many people at the meet or is his job to get the many, as many people on the podium? Well, and that brings me to my next point. The more tickets, the more you're going to win. We can go back through, look at recent history. A lot of people had Jake Whiteman winning gold. Some Great Britain. Did a lot of people have that? You were looking at the betting odds. Yeah, they weren't good. I mean, he wasn't. Probably like 10 to 1. Yeah, he wasn't 500 to 1, but he certainly wasn't the favorite. In our country, the United States, we can go back and look at a ton of examples. People who won medals, won gold medals even, who weren't even favored at all. Emily so, Enfeld. Yeah. Molly Seidel. Jenny Simpson back in 2011. Just a few. There's a ton of examples, ton of countries. You got to – this is sports. You never know what's going to happen. You have to send people. In the article, he brings up about Tokyo, coming up short at the Tokyo Olympics, Right. Let's look at why they came up, quote-unquote, short at the Tokyo Olympics. I don't think they did. All right? Well, Keely you, you have receipts. Oh, I got notes. This is great. This is, a, this is a, an issue that just drives me up the wall. And if you're talking about allocating resources, right? Did Keely Hodgkinson lose in Tokyo to Thing Mo because of resources? No. No. Did Laura Muir lose to Faith Kip Yegon because of resources? No. Did Whiteman beat Ingebrigtsen because he had more resources? Maybe. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. No. It's not resources. They were better on the day. Yeah. Right? Let's not complicate this. They were simply better on the day. Allowing more people to go doesn't make your star athletes worse. It's an individual sport. Those two things are not related when it comes to the highest levels of sport. Like, has there ever been a time where Mo Farah's trainer was like, Mo's like, hey, I need you to massage my leg for me. And the trainer's like, you're not getting it today. I'm going to massage th this guy. <laughs> right, right. I only can. The ninth best discus thrower. Is getting the massage. Sorry, Mo Farah, you're not getting a massage today. Yeah. So no, that never happened. But let's they would just be like, you go at 10.15, the other guy will go at 10.30. Yeah. And we're good. Yeah. Laura Muir is not 
going to come up short because Great Britain decided to send an extra discus thrower who qualified rightfully. Right? And that they had to add an extra Gatorade bottle in the tent and they did, couldn't have the money. So then everyone got a little bit less Gatorade. So she had a little less electrolytes. This is why she came <laughs> short. Yeah. Basically. This, is, this is ridiculous. And this is, I know the U.S. is different, right? Because the U.S. has metal contenders in virtually every event. So we have a clear cut, relatively clear cut, not always. You have to dive into some spreadsheets. Uh, you know, every now and then on Olympic trials, but we have a relatively clear cut system. Top yeah. three, you go. But let's talk about the resources for a second, right? Let's talk yeah. about resources. You've been to global championships before. I have. I've been to global championships before. You have. You think they could make some cuts on who decides to go who aren't athletes? Oh, good point. Do you think there might be a few people who are wearing team polos for 10 days who could sit at home? How important is the coach, Gordon? Yeah. The event coach. I, I mean, I think... You need, a, all, you need someone think, to pick the relay. I think the NBA All-Star Game coach <laughs> might be a little more important than the track and field They coach. have their own coaches. Let me say yeah. that again. They have their own coaches. Do you need someone there as a representative? Absolutely sure. I'm not saying that. But you don't need these gigantic staffs that they travel with. So if it's a money issue, the athletes are the last people to cut. that you should cut. You should send the athletes first, have a coach text them what to do if you can't afford to put the coach on a plane, and then take care of everybody else later. This is against competition. It's not going to work. It's not going to help anybody. All it is is just alighting the simple truth here that some years it's going to be good for you and some years it's not. But not even showing up to play is a recipe for continuing the same mistakes over and over again done so i agree with you but let's just think a little bit in this guy's head what's this guy's name uh jack buckner jack buckner sounds like a baseball player uh great photo that he used for him like they definitely daily mail is like we got a photo of jack buckner this is the photo we're going to show show that cool it's great it's just like him rubbing his eye um he's probably stressed about all the well it says he's having sleepless nights or financial troubles yeah i get that they're not okay then say that if, if it's a money thing, say it's a money thing. Don't say the best way to get gold medals is to only take six people. And it's the six people that we decide have the best gold medal yeah. chances. They're not a tiny country with only one athlete. If you had to narrow down Great Britain's team to six athletes to, to pick the medalists, you'd have a tough time yeah. right now. I mean, hell, how hard is it to pick the best three men in the 1500 for Great Britain right now? They are, they are loaded. So if it's a money thing, say it's a money thing and figure out a way to fund it. Get on GoFundMe or something like that. Yeah. Don't say this is the best way to win gold medals because it's not. No. Again, I agree with everything you're saying. I'm only going to try to just be a little bit devil's advocate for the sake of conversation. Okay. Don't blame me though if I get really mad because this issue just bothers me to no end. So I agree basically with 99%. I'll sit over here. I'm going to sit over here. I agree like 99% of what you're saying for the most part, 100% of what you're saying. Um, don't even know what the 1% I disagree with you on. So. Uh, just th but you know, you never agree 100% on anything, right? You got to always stag it a little bit. But what I got to say is here, there is a little bit of a mindset though, where you look at the world standards over the past few years, they have dramatically gone up. I mean, gone, may been harder to, been faster. Yeah. There was a, Paul Chalimo, when he was asked to run 1320 or whatever to qualify for the Olympics, he ran 1319. Could Paul Chalimo have run 1309 that year if they made the standard 1310? Probably, because it's in our mindset with the pacing of standards. You run to just get in. Like, that's how people are. You always do your bare... You don't want to overexert yourself to qualify for the next event, right? And so when the standards have gone up, everyone's like... Only four people hit that standard last year. How are more people going to hit the standard? Well, everyone hits the standard because they all decide to run faster. We're going to see it this weekend in a 10K. The 10K standard is faster this year. Mm. But guess what? Same amount of people are probably going to hit it because guess what? They're all going to just run a little bit faster because they're going to all do the bare minimum to get in. And I'm thinking, again, this UK athletics guy is thinking incorrectly for the record, but he's thinking, all right, if we make the standard just be hit the world athletics threshold, the athletes are going to compete to get to that world athletics threshold. But we make them 
you need to get to an even elite, a higher threshold, which is the Great Britain threshold. It's going to force all these athletes who would have just done the bare minimum to get in and they're going to go above and beyond and then that sets up a like a rising tide of everyone now achieving for even higher greatness where the goal is now i want a medal and not i just want to make the team right because there we had to admit there are a lot of at one again i agree with most of these there's one issue that i think our sport has is that there are people who are competing for medals and there are people who are competing for teams now there is something about the moment of making your first team and it's like a not it's like a it's a it doesn't translate to any other sport, right? It's a cool thing and I and I get it. I'm not thinking we should take that away from our sport. But there is something interesting about how you go to an Olympic trials and there's an athlete whose yeah. dream is to make the team and there's an athlete who's saying this is prelims. And that's Maybe they want everyone to look at it as prelims because their dream should be to win a medal at the world level, not to make a team. And I think if you make it harder to make a team, that means they're going to then translate their goals to make get a medal. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Do you know, like, I think that applies more, though, when you're going farther down the list. Okay. Oh, you want to make an Olympic trials in the marathon or something. Set the standard at, get the Boston at qualifier. two – 19 versus 216 we're talking about athletes here that already are well aware of what it takes to win a medal this isn't going to make them work any harder all it's going to do if they actually see this through because we've seen this with other countries this isn't a new thing yeah all it's going to do is leave, is leave off off people who may, may, yeah, yeah they're a long shot, shot 100, 100 to 1 200, 200 whatever, whatever. But here's the thing that 201, maybe they get experience and the neck they come back four years later and then they have championship experience under their belt and they perform better because of that. Or maybe if you want to look long-term view, and this isn't the case probably with Great Britain because they've been there's long been British, you know, uh, excellence in athletics. But say you're from a, a smaller country and you turn down a spot, a country that hasn't had much experience in athletics, you should run at the Olympics. You should run the world championships because someone at home will be watching some kid who's 10 years old, 15 years old, right? I don't want to be too Hollywood here, but that's how that stuff starts, right? And that kid sees, oh, we had we had a participant in the foreign hurdles. Like, I didn't even know what that was. Like, I didn't even know, oh, shot put, discus, triple jump, whatever it is, pole vault, they get introduced to the sport through these local stories. I just don't think it impacts the people at the top. Yeah, and you're sacrificing the, that next tier down to help these people. You're not helping them. They're already everybody's already trying their best, right? This is this whole idea that's just like if we just raise the standard that much more, then then magically we're gonna snap our fingers and Neil Gorley's gonna beat Jakob Ingebrigtsen because because we made the standard hot harder. No. Yeah, it's not gonna turn the fourth place finishers into third place finishers. All this is gonna turn the twentieth place finishers. To, did not qualify. That's it, all it's do. an excuse to not show up. Yeah, we're gonna take our ball and we're gonna go home because we can't reach this magical, unattainable standard.